good afternoon, good evening, good whatever time of day it is. Thank you for tuning in to Conversations with Dr. Don. For your first time viewers, Conversations with Dr. Don is an ongoing series of one hour standalone talk shows where I, I interview interesting people like most of you out there about who they are as unique, one of a kind individuals and about whatever it is that they have decided to talk about. And my guests tonight have a lot to talk about. They've been on before, and they're always a delight. Uh, Carolina and, or Carolina. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> <Everybody's> good. <laughs> and Joseph Honus. Mm -hmm. Did I pronounce that right? Close enough. <laughs> <laughs> so, title of uh, tonight's show has a unique title, Back from the Dead. There's a story about that, which we'll get into. <laughs> but there's a lot more we'll talk about because uh, my guests have been so involved in veterans affairs and things concerned with vets and what's been happening in our country and around the world that uh, affect vets and uh, I, I will come into it later on. So let's go into the first half of the show, the bio stuff. Okay. Uh, is there a veterans organization website that you want to cite? Oh, uh, two. Um, IVAW. I-V-A-W. Which is a Iraq Veterans Against the War. Iraq Veterans Against the War. And that including Af Afghan veterans as well. Okay. And what's the website? Uh, it's IVAW.com. I, I don't know it, but all you have to do is type that in, and that'll pop up on the I Internet. IVAW.com. Okay. And then Veterans for Peace. And veterans for peace. Peace dot com. Mm -hmm. dot com. And control room, you hear? I forgot to get that before the show started. But if you can uh, make a couple of panels for when, okay, we talk about it. You can show that because the viewers need to know what's going. Look at that shirt you're wearing, man. That's fantastic. It's Tabasco, that's man. Bloody Marys. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody Marys. <There> so, <laughs> so let's start again. You know, I always have a trick question. I can ask it uh, first or second. Shall we interview uh, Carolina mm. first? Okay. You ready for your trick question? Yep. Uh, if I were to ask your best friend, who is Carolina, what would he or she say? Carolina, Carolina is, what would I would say that was Joseph. What? Joseph. He's my best friend. Uh-huh. What would he say about you? He would say, Carolina is what? Um, his best friend. No, <laughs> and his wife. <laughs> and his wife. We, um... Uh, we met 20 years ago, mm -hmm. and um, 20 years ago, 21 this that year was actually. 21 this year, yeah. yeah. That's a wow. And um, very proud of that fact. And it's. Um, what, uh, would he, what would you say about you if I asked him the question? I don't know. I'm here in the room. <laughs> who, who is Carolina? He would say Carolina is a terrible person, no. a nice person. <laughs> what would he say? A good person. Uh huh. A good person. Um, uh huh. Works um, in um, working for human services. I worked for Multnomah County for about 13, 14 years mm. with mm -hmm. aging, aged and disabled folks. Okay. Determining eligibility for them for their medical and food stamp benefits. Okay. Well, when and where were you born? Brownsville, Texas. And, and when were you born? Can I ask you your age? Sure. I'm 57. 57. You look good. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And you're up with this guy. Any r religious, uh, uh, racial, national, or cultural heritage uh, about you that would be interest of interest to the viewers? Well, Anything about your cultural heritage? I'm Hispanic, and I grew up where papayas grow out your backyard, in your backyard. <laughs> oh, i got to move there. I love papayas. <laughs> you know, they're wonderful with milk. My grandmother used to fix it with milk in the morning. Talk about wonderful <laughs> vitamins. I mean, yeah. I eat papaya about two or three times a day. Isn't regularly. that wonderful? Yeah. 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 <laughs> but uh, enough about me. Uh, <laughs> and uh, do you have a religious preference nowadays? You have a religion? Ca well, Catholic on paper, 
Yeah, but, same here. Right. Um, but we go to a serve it to a church that's um, non denominational. Non denominational. Uh -huh. so. And that works for you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, and your formal education? Um, I have a bachelor, bachelor's in sociology. Sociology, oh, one of those people to help her kind of uh, jobs, huh? And uh, who is your husband or your boyfriend? Oh, yeah, your husband. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's that clone, I told you, he's around, man. <laughs> that evil twin. <laughs> How about children? You got kids? We have two children. Well, we have one child by us. That's ours. Mm -hmm. And I have a son that I had already from a previous marriage. Mm -hmm. And he's 37. And our daughter is turning 20 tomorrow. 20 tomorrow. And going to Japan. Yep. Yes. Fantastic. And do you have, do they have children? No. Well, oh, yeah, James my son. Too. Yeah. Our yeah. son has uh, two, two girls. The girls and how old are they about? Um, our older one is almost three. Uh huh. And on the twenty-first, and the baby is five months old. Do they like their grandparents? Lala is my name because I boil us too hard to pronounce. <laughs> so I'm Lala. Lala. When they come over. <laughs> yeah, we got older and then we seem to appreciate babies more <laughs> than before. You know, it's so really wonderful. Amazing. What a gift. Yeah, a, a brief aside here. Across the street from where we live now in Beaverton, there's a couple that's been there about three years now. And they've got a new baby boy who just started walking about a month oh, ago. Yay. And uh, if I'm not out front, I, I have a big window. And when I happen to see them walking, and he's, he's just all running. He can hardly walk, and he runs. And the little girl is about three, and she's got a little baby. I, uh, it's just, and it melts my heart. And uh, I should have had this tenderness when I had my five daughters. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> How about your political persuasion? Will you confess uh, what political persuasion you have nowadays? Your left, right, or center, or what? I think right. Mm. No, left. Oh. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Get out of here. I don't know. <laughs> You're military left, remember that? <laughs> <laughs> military left. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Uh, uh, memberships in political, uh, uh, social, or civic organizations. Do you have any memberships in those kinds of things? Veterans for Peace. Veterans for Peace. Yeah, okay. Uh, any persons from the past or alive today that you particularly look up to or admire? Any names come to mind? No, I'm pretty um, separated from my family who's all down in Brownsville, and mm. we don't have a lot of connection. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I pretty much have my hands full. Oh, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> Can we switch over to you? Uh-oh. <laughs> and tell me your full name again. Joseph Walter Holness. Where did Walter come from? That's a little old name they gave me. <laughs> and <laughs> no significance to it, just they liked it, huh? I guess. I have yet to know why I get called that, but, you know, I came to find out later on. My dad, well, uh, it's really my, my stepdad, which mm -hmm. now I know why I didn't, instinctively didn't like the guy growing up. He was... Well, not, it, was a, it was not a happy childhood. Mm -hmm. So I guess um, mm -hmm. my mom, hmm, maybe she had an affair. I don't know, but that was always overseas. And so uh -huh. uh, a guy came to our door one day, um, this is after he passed away and all that. And uh, I guess it was my real father. He wouldn't outright say it, but then finding out later on, my, mom, my mom's suffering from dementia and stuff and uh, you know I found out these things and so wow. um, which makes sense um, and it's just something I kind of deep down knew something wasn't right there like stuff was being hid so oh well I mean I'm not bitter about it. it's it's kind of like closure sure how long ago did you this occur uh, well I found out about, that's about two two years ago mm -hmm. I've always been suspect uh -huh. I never brought it up but you know there's a lot of stuff in my family's past that were always kept like cloak and dagger type thing because my father who I grew up with was kind of an organized crime. <laughs> oh, you so, had an interesting. Yeah. Movie. So we'll do another hour just on those kinds of juicy things. Yeah. Like, yeah we, no. yeah, that was a, that's a whole different ball game <laughs> yeah. can of worms. <laughs> yeah. Uh, why were you born? 
Why was I born? Yes. Why does everybody always repeat that question? Why were you born? Uh, well, I would hope I got some role to fill. I mean, I was, I'm glad because I met my wife, my best friend, and you know what's so great about our marriage is, is we almost we're almost thinking the same things at the same time. That's what's so cool about it. It may sound kind of corny, but it's, it's like she can be thinking something, I'll be thinking it, or vice versa, and it's really cool. So. You know, we just, I guess after a while, you grow up and you start learning each other's or just becoming so in tune with each other. How'd you meet? Well, uh, blind we met date. A blind date. Really? Yeah, a buddy yeah. of mine was having a card game. And I really didn't want to go. I wasn't feeling too hot, so. And he was dating my best friend. Uh, my friend was dating her best friend, sorry. And so, <laughs> and so she was going to be the partner. It was a four way card game. Sure. So. Mm. The fourth sum. Yeah, and that's how we met, and so we just kind of hit it off from there, yeah. and uh, yeah. So, how long did it take you to learn what was re what he was really like? Well, he was he was very um, amorous immediately. He kept saying, "Oh, you're so beautiful! You're so beautiful! You should be a model." I'm thinking, "Yeah, right." <laughs> and, no, good um, thing when I see her. Ain't that grand? <laughs> right, he was quite precious. But um, I think probably in the next couple of months, we started seeing each other, mm -hmm. you know, dates, lunch dates, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then um, he was sent to Germany, and um, he proposed before he went. Mm -hmm. And so we were engaged for a while until he got a reduction in force Did rift it, yeah. Yeah. back to the States. About what year was this? Oh, well, we got married Roughly. in 91. Uh-huh. Okay. So, yeah, the, and it was June 6, 1991, and the significance of, and we didn't plan it that way, but June 6 is D-Day, D -Day, and yeah. I always said, well, <laughs> it'll be easy to remember our anniversary, D-Day. <laughs> but In it was, more ways yeah. than one. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a religious preference? You mentioned earlier that you go to this non-denominational well, Christian church. Well, I came up in a mixed family of religious, uh, Protestant Catholic. So I saw both sides of the fence. Uh -huh. I mean, and I just, I saw them always bickering amongst each other. I'm like, well, you know, you all worship the same God, and yet one says they're better than the other, and I just got sick of it. Now, I believe in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and it's a very simple message, and that's the way I look at it. I don't like ritualism. I just never have. Um, to me, I love, even as a kid, I'd go away to get away from everything just to be out around with God, you know. I grew up down in South Florida, mm -hmm. and it's funny how she was mentioning about papayas grew wild. We had banana trees everywhere where I lived. Mm -hmm. And so you go, and there's those little bananas, little short fat ones, remember those? Yeah. Uh -huh. They are sweet, perfect with cereal. Oh, and that's not like you're getting the supermarket now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and my grandmother had avocados, and I told people this, they didn't believe me, and finally, one of the grocery stores out here got a Florida avocado like this mm -hmm. huge because most of the time you see them like that and that's like to me that's a joke yeah my grandmother had these things growing in her yard huge avocados uh -huh. we had orange trees lime trees lemon trees and it was just uh -huh. you know fresh fruit was like literally fresh fruit <laughs> i'm salivating <laughs> <laughs> so and your formal education anything worth commenting about that well i got a master's in educational leadership bachelor's mm -hmm. in environmental science mm -hmm. and then two associates wow man you believed in that education stuff oh yeah man. that's instill that in our kids too yeah uh and your political persuasion oh boy i can get in trouble on this one <laughs> <laughs> well homeland security going to come for you if you pass right <laughs> Well, let's just say I tend to believe in some of the principles of communism. I think there's a lot of uh, noble principles about it. Unfortunately, it doesn't get practiced the way it was meant to get practiced. And, and it's like anything when people corrupt stuff. It's like democracy, same thing. Yes. I've never had a guest to come right out and say uh, certain things about communism that I like. Uh, some have couched it in terms of socialism, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then communism, I think, is some version of socialism versus yes. another version of capitalism. There's, there's ben, uh, benevolent capitalism and monopoly capitalism and all sorts of 
uh, capitalism, there are all sorts of socialisms. So you like, what would you like, what do you like about communism as compared to capitalism as practiced in our country? In pure form of communism, it's like a like communal. Mm -hmm. And the people of the nation, if it's run properly, they're not in this class system. They're not in a caste system kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And people work. There's People are working for the common good, not only your family, but for the common good of your country and your culture. And under a capitalist system, it's dog eat dog. Yeah. Plus, we have a very, you know, we have democracy, or I like to call it American democracy, mm -hmm. and rogue capitalism. So, and that's basically what it is here. Rogue I mean, capitalism. That's, you know, there's capitalism, there's rogue capitalism. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't see anything wrong with a person having a business. That's cool, you know, private ownership. But, you know, it gets to the point where we're being so dehumanized, and people look at bank accounts anymore instead of the person. They look at, you know, what you are as far as your money making potential, as far as you are as an individual, as a human being, and what you're worth. I think about, as you mentioned, rogue capitalism, I think about what kind of a communism did Joe Stalin practice? Was that the kind of communism was, you have in mind? No. No, that was, <laughs> even Lenin was leery of this guy. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, if you study Lenin, um, yeah. Vladimir Lenin, and uh, he, uh, he was even nervous of him, because Stalin just, Stalin was his own worst enemy, and of course it cost the lives of millions of Russians. Yeah. Yeah, very interesting, and... Uh, it was more like a dictatorship. Yes, of course. I mean, it was so funny, the World War II, they were fighting Hitler and the fascists, and in essence, Stalin was cut from the same cloth as Hitler was, really. Yes. So... Power mad. But memberships in political, social, or civic organizations, uh, veterans organizations... Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm in the IBAW. I just haven't been active lately because I've got a lot of what well, she'll testify. I've got so many things going on, health issues, and then of course, as the thing says, back from the dead. So. <laughs> yeah, I just can't wait till the break, and then we're going to start off with back from the dead that story, and then go into some other stuff here. Uh, persons uh, from the past or alive today that you particularly admire or look up to. Any names come to mind? Well, I'm going to say my wife, I mean, I look up to her, but she's not from my past. But she's alive But she today. came from a family kind of dysfunctional like I did. You know, I was kind of, didn't, you know, I kind of broke away from them. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, although we came up differently, we came up similar. We were kind of like the and black sheep of the family kind of thing. Yeah, so, that's familiar to me. I, I was a 12th kid and... A Catholic family. Oh, yeah. See that depression? <laughs> I some too many male corpus. <laughs> <laughs> I was an older boy too long. Yeah. So drink Never mind. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> now I'm a humanist, a, a skeptic, an agnostic. Uh, yeah. Somebody well. even called me an atheist, but I say, no, I'm not an atheist. I'm an atheist. Atheist is a pejorative. Atheist is something different. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's my story. Let's go on with yours. No, it's kind of funny you mention that because one of my relatives considers me like the worst of blasphemers because of my opinion of the Pope. Because they're like, oh, the Pope. And I'm like, he's just a man. He's an old man. At the, well, the one that at the time was the Pope when last I had that conversation with those of my relatives that were Catholic, they were, yeah, they, yeah, because I basically thought the Pope was. So, no, just, no offense, Catholics out there. <laughs> oh man, they're going to be coming after yeah. you and me too for having you on my show. Huh? Mm. <laughs> All right. So, uh, why don't you tell us the story of how we got the title of this show, and then after that we'll take a break. Back from the dead. Where, where, where'd that come from? <laughs> well, I'll tell you. After these last few years, uh, you know, even since. I got a, came home from Iraq in 2004. I did my tours 2003, 2004. You know, when my Middle East tour started in Iraq, uh, two of them. Yeah. Well, I did two there, and then I was also in the United Arab Emirates doing Operation Enduring Freedom, and you know where United Arab Emirates is. Oh yes. And there was a base called Minhad, mm -hmm. and the irony being is, we were not supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. Yet, it, I mean, yeah. 
I just that logic was so ridiculous because planes are coming and going out of this area with U.S. Air Force, United States Marines, U.S. Navy. It's like coming back and forth, back and forth. It's like, did they think these people were stupid, their own people? I mean, there's got to be something going on out there with the Americans, military-wise. But they were flying. We had I was with a C-130 unit, and we were supporting them, and they would fly missions in and out of uh, Afghanistan from mm -hmm. there. So, so yeah, it was your military duty? Uh, we support the aircraft. Uh -huh. So, you know, and supplies, everything else. I didn't go to Afghanistan. But when I came home, they sent me to Iraq, and they augmented us in with the, because I was in the Air Force, and they augmented us in with the United States Army. And so I was in charge of a gun truck platoon. I had 30 men and women under my charge, and we operated these gun trucks and provided security for Army, or I should say military and civilian convoys throughout the country of Iraq. And oh. so... That was a nasty business, roadside bombs, RPGs, landmines, you name it. Was it a good war? It sucked. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing good about it. Yeah. No weapons of mass destruction. That was a farce. Why was the U.S. in there in the first place? Uh, well, besides that uh, oily substance, um, which is you know, one of the main reasons. I think it, it was a vendetta from the Bush family. I think that Saddam, I think Saddam, if I'm not mistaken, didn't. He uh, threatened George Sr. or George Bush Sr. Mm -hmm. And I guess basically uh, Junior wanted to get even with him and any way he could. I mean, that's just my opinion we've talked yeah. about. That, but yeah. It was just an excuse to get in there and get the oil, honestly. That's just how I feel about it, because why else do we go to countries? Okay, let's get back to Back from the Dead. <laughs> what is that about? Okay. I had been fighting with the VA and the military for not only my disabilities, but also to get my retirement. I mean, finally get officially retired out. And it just was a long and hard road. I mean, ask any member of my family on that one. And everything finally got squared away. Well, I get this letter in the mail a few months ago, basically saying, I'm dead. It You're said that dead. I'm dead. And that my spouse, I guess supposedly got this lump sum of money, which I've yet to see, you know, like a survivor's benefits. Yeah. And that it, it's taxable. And I'm looking at this, and I had her read it, and I said, just want to make sure, I want to have another person read this, make sure I'm not going... And that's exactly what it said. So, um, so you had to find some money to pay taxes on. Well, it was these monies supposedly that were deposited into our I like know. a survivor's benefit. I guess like a hundred grand or whatever it was. Yeah, and disability and income disability. is not taxable. Yeah, and they were gonna, you know, start taxing this. So I immediately called and I said this, and they, of course, they had the wrong last four of my social. Okay, nothing close. Right name, right address, but there were other documents behind it that did have my right social. Mm -hmm. So I immediately got in touch with the government or who was supposed to help me out on this. Oh, we're glad, you know, we'll get into this right away. I said, you better. I said, you know, uh, this could hurt my retirement. This could hurt, you know, my VA stuff. Sure. Not to mention the IRS come looking me up or, excuse me, I'm dead, be looking her up. <laughs> so, yeah, we had to get through that rigmarole. It was another fight on our, on our table to have to deal with. And so they said, oh, we got it cleared up, and the government's going to send you an apology letter. Well, I've yet to see that. And how long ago did you get this letter again? It was almost two months ago. Two months ago. Mm -hmm. And you don't have anything in waiting that said it's cleared up? No. Just oh, words, man. word of mouth on the phone. You know, they said, oh, yeah, we cleared it up. That's nice. I said, I don't want to have the IRS knocking on my door or anybody else for that matter, thinking that I'm dead. So. Yeah. And I still can't pass through walls. I've tried, but. <laughs> <laughs> Tacky joke, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I love them. I love them. So uh, let's take a little break and then come back and sure. talk about other stuff, the title of the show and your experience in the Middle East and your views on communism and so, or whatever else. And, and you, too. It isn't just his show. You're oh. just that, too. All right. <laughs> yeah. So can we take a break in there, please? Let's put up a few panels.
Okay, we're back. Thanks for staying tuned. And uh, for you viewers who were channel surfing and found us by accident, <laughs> or you didn't watch the opening of the show, Conversations with Dr. Don is an ongoing series of one-hour standalone talk shows where I interview interesting guests about who they are as unique, one-of-a-kind individuals and about whatever it is that we've decided to talk about. And we've decided to talk about Back from the Dead, and we're going to talk some more about other things that my guests brought up. And they've been on before, and it's always a, a delightful time to have them on again. Thank you, thank you again for coming thank you. on. I have a cheat sheet here, and it'll take six hours to get through it. But why don't you two? <laughs> I'll melt away here. <laughs> what shall we start talking about first? Well, you lead, I'll follow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you mentioned Korea? Yep. Were you in Korea? Mm hmm Osan. Oh my gosh. And like we were talking about the, you know, like the swastikas over there is a symbol for peace. And that's how the topic came up, but um, I was at Osan Air Base. And of course you go out on, you know, in town or go around the Korean countryside and you'll see certain temples and they, they'll have these swastikas. They're like red mm. or gold. As a matter of fact, they even got a uh, gold swastika for Carolina. <laughs> But it's, it's like a Buddhist, I believe it's Buddhist mm -hmm. symbol. Yeah. I'm not you know, familiar with that, but, um, and it was, I was getting a charge out of this because there's all these people that, there's Nazis everywhere. I'm like, they're not Nazis, it's a Buddhist thing or a religious thing. Don't, don't call them that, okay? <laughs> You'll get them pissed <laughs> off real quick. <laughs> so. So uh, also you mentioned the organizations that you are associated with, even though you're not very active right now. Will you talk about those for a few, uh, for a minute or so? IBAW? IBAW, what does that mean? Iraq Veterans Against the War. Yeah, there it is. And Veterans for Peace too, huh? Yep. My, you're pretty active. Why is it that you, you're taking this position, I mean, this position on our country's wars? Uh, you fought in wars, yeah. and you uh, you went overseas, both sides of the world, and now you're against uh, our country's wars. Well, you know, it's a lot of my family members fought in most of the major wars in this country, and some relatives fought in Europe. I mean, that were Europeans that were fighting in that war too. Yeah. So. Um, and I've always believed in defending the country because I mean I was career military. I spent eight years army, and the rest of my time air force. So. It was just something I felt I had to do as part of my life. I mean, it's, if that makes any sense. How and many years all told were you in the military? About 17. Okay. And I got a, I, they had to give me a medical retirement. Because of injuries? Uh... Well, that, I mean, I had to get back surgery because injuries over there. Uh, the PTSD thing. Um, I used to pass my you know, like physical fitness test, no problem. And I was failing those, and of course, they'll reduce your rank, they'll, they'll kick you out, literally. And I was having health issues because we were exposed to depleted uranium and all kinds of stuff in it. I mean, I was on my six pair of glasses. I had 20 20 before I went to Iraq. Really? And six pair of glasses. This is my sixth pair. Mm -hmm. So you're still suffering from the effects of having been yep. over there. Mm -hmm. And are you on a disability pension? Yes. Okay. So, which they tried to take away from me, by the way. They did? They uh, tried to. Why did they, what reason did they give for trying to take your pension away? They said, it was, they said it was cured. Now, this guy that made this decision was not even a, a practicing physician at all. I mean, he wasn't, you know, a doctor of anything. He was just some guy working at the VA, and I was doing some questionnaire, and I guess he assumed I was cured of my PTSD and other issues. And I'm like, and he wasn't an MD. No, and so I had to fight that. It was a it was a long, hard fight on that one. Yeah, how long did, ago did you get that resolved? How long ago was that? That was about three, four months ago. Mm -hmm. Just Re recently. recently. So ongoing recently. Mm -hmm. Son of a gun. So that's settled for now, huh? Settled for now. Yeah. How's your PTSD symptoms uh, ongoing now? If well, I may ask that. Well, sometimes it's better to hear it from somebody that's experiencing it. You know. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, they've had me on all kinds of meds, all right? They've been literally just testing me with these meds, and they're not doing me anything. I mean, they're just, they're just not. The last set of meds they had me on 
had Prozac in it, which I told him in the beginning, I, I have a bad reaction to that. Yeah. Well, this Prozac, uh, I think it was like uh, clonidine or something like that. Mm -hmm. Clon clonidine. <laughs> It was supposed to suppress the nightmares because I, I wasn't sleeping. I mean, I, I don't sleep well. I just don't. And I get these nightmares. Sometimes they're hor you know, horrific. Other times they're not. Uh, you know, there's always something about Iraq in, in my dreams. If this makes any sense, I don't know if you ever experienced like uh, traumatic scenarios and stuff. But I'm sure not to the extent that you did. Yes. But okay. you know what I mean? It's like you could be dreaming about other nightmare. things yes. and there's still be stuff with Iraq even though the dream has nothing to do with it. And then sometimes it's direct. And these medications are supposed to help me sleep and forget the nightmares. Well, the problem with that is I'd wake, I'd still have them and I'd wake up all freaked out and not know why. But these pills were also causing short-term memory loss and, I, and then intestinal trouble. So I just stopped and I called him. I said, I can't take this anymore. You know, yeah, I'm forgetting the nightmares, but I'm waking up still freaked out, yeah. don't know why, and then I'm having short-term memory loss. Yeah. So. So how much medication are you on now? Less than before? Less uh, than before, a yeah. lot of the stuff. I just, I, I had, we still got it home. I had this humongous bag of all these pills oh, they've been pumping on me yeah. ever since I came off from Iraq. And so I just, I'm just not messing with this stuff anymore. Yeah, I have a, 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 a thought that may be useful for you. You ever hear of a book called Worst Pills, Best Pills? No. That's put out by uh, a Ralph Nader organization many years ago. Sidney mm -hmm. Wolf, MD, is a editor. It's, uh, it's like a Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, and any time a, a physician prescribes something for my wife or I, we go mm -hmm. to that. There's three, de three uh, descriptors for any particular medication. Uh, one of them is don't take this no matter what anybody says. The next category is you can take these for a limited amount of time, three months, six months, whatever. And then the third category is you can take these indefinitely. And it's very, very useful. And if you've got a good physician who's pretty objective, he'll appreciate you doing your own research, too. So you can get an idea, look these, look these up and see what your view is of them, what they say about them. And then you can talk to your, your MD about it because if there's one that says don't take these at all, there's another one that does the same thing mm -hmm. that isn't rated that way by worst pills, best pills, right. uh, and, and go, go to that website. and it's, uh, it's very inexpensive and we've been using it for years. But uh, I, I wouldn't want to be in your situation right now because occasionally, on a rare occasion, my nightmares are just yeah. I almost drowned uh, as a kid, mm -hmm. and when I have a dream about mm. water or drowning, I'm not about to compare it with what you experienced. But it's, it's in still gets you, it affects you, it's frightening, yeah. Yeah, but you're living with it ongoing now, yeah. Well, it got to the point, I mean, I, I mean, I used, I mean, I still drink not that much, but I mean, I was knocking down a bottle of vodka every night, I mean, yeah, to the point yeah. just to sleep, and even that wasn't doing anything, I mean, <laughs> I was like, golly, what's going on here? Yeah. So, you know, I mean, I'd stop doing that, because that's, that's damaging in the long run, you know, I mean, it's just not good. I mean, I wasn't getting violent or anything, it just, I just can't, I, you can tell us, I, can't, I couldn't sleep, and I needed something to, I would just, just feel like I was just falling, you know, just coming apart at the seams. I wasn't getting the rest, and when I'd go to sleep, stuff would go on, and then I'd be up again, and any slightest little noise, I'm up. But you're so. still hanging in with the VA and fighting them. Well, that battle's kind of over right now. I'm still, you know, I knocked it down a few alert levels with them, but because I don't, you know, every time I go to the mailbox, Anytime I see like a brown envelope or a thing from a from VA or the government, it's like, uh, and they on always, Friday. Uh, yeah, on Friday. I, well, yeah, they always do, they always do this on Friday. <laughs> this to me, serious, this, and I bet you other vets will testify to this. They always send you stuff on Friday because you get your mail late in the day and it usually, most, a lot of it's like crummy news. Uh -huh. And so you want to contact them, it's like, okay, wait a minute, what's going on here? But you can't because they're already gone for the day mm -hmm. and then, you're stewing on this over the weekend, so by Monday, you're like, yes. Yeah, and that's how I am with it, you know. I think that's their logic is, well, maybe it'll, 
give them a time of pause and calm down. It's like, not me, man. That Cajun blood gets fired up in me and I'm ready to fight. And by Monday morning, I want to tear people apart. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, shall we move on to another topic? Sure. Uh, why are there's a, a significant number of veterans who are against the war that's going on in the Middle East? I think, and this is the thing that really irritates me, because I've had people say, oh, you're not a patriot, you're not an American, and you're this, that. I'm like, whatever. I said, Iraq didn't attack us, Afghanistan didn't attack us, just a handful of people from different countries used our own planes to, you know, do terrorist attack. It wasn't like a nation, the nation of Iraq and Afghanistan mustered their armies and navies and air force together and hit us. You know, and, mm -hmm. and these people like to compare it with Pearl Harbor. It's like 9-11, like it's like BS, nothing like it. When we were hit in Pearl Harbor, it was a nation declaring war on another nation with a professional air force and navy mm -hmm. and troops, not the 9-11, that was a terrorist thing. And so, so they're using that as an excuse. To it was a rally pursue. cry to get everybody to go over there. And we're still there. And even though they say combat operations have quit in Iraq, we still got a presence there. Okay. And, and this thing in Afghanistan, well, you see what's happening. We're all we're stuck there. And why are people there? You have people that have multiple tours there. They don't know why they're there and they don't understand why they're still there. I mean, bin Laden's gone. Uh, Saddam was long gone, including his sons, and we're still in that part of the world. Why? Do we know why we're in that part of the world? Well, why I'm sure do the government it? does, or the powers that be behind the scene, uh, but your, your fighting men and women that are on the ground, you know, that they're away from their families, and yeah, we all understood what comes with the uniform once you put it on, but think about it. I mean, no wonder people are going schizoid and freaking out over there. I mean, I'm not, I, you know, condoning what's been happening here in the last few months with what soldiers are doing, but they need to pull these people back because they're gonna have a load of more problems on their hands if they keep, if they keep us over there. They really are. Okay. People can only take so much. What's happening in Syria? Oh man, <laughs> well the last mm. thing I saw, uh, <sighs> there's a lot of Syrians going to Turkey. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, it's not a funny situation, but Assad, I guess, well, there was some kind of a deal they were supposed to be striking with the UN, which he and just he's ignored. ignoring yeah. it. Yeah. So he's kind of. Some people are suggesting this is um, America is advancing the interests of the American Empire. Oh, Pax Americana. Oh. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So that brings me to the next question: What do you think of the Obama administration? Well, I think he's no more better than the guy that was before him. Yeah, and that's how I've gotten anymore. I just don't, I'm just having a hard time even wanting to vote in this next election because honestly, I don't know what it is with politicians these days. Democrats, Republicans, they're all cut from the same elitist cloth in my book. They really truly are. They're just in it for themselves and their personal agendas and whoever the, pup, you know, the puppet masters are behind them, you know, collecting the fees. Do you agree with what he said? Pretty much. I don't, I would vote for Obama only because I can't vote for a man named Mitt. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that just sounds insane. I got to look a lot at my crew. I can't believe I just heard that. <laughs> Mitt. I'm voting for a guy named Mitt. It's just, uh, it, that's insanity to me. I, I don't understand that. I guess you can call your kid anything. You know, the movie stars name their kids all these uh, uh, yeah. names, but um, Frank Zappa's kids. Mitt <laughs> comes from our generation. Yeah. How'd you get that name? Did, did you see my opening slide? Rock solid, vote Rocky dot org. Uh, 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 Rocky Anderson, uh, twice mayor of Salt Lake City, Utah. I, there's a panel up there, my name, that talks about the Justice Party USA. Can you find that panel there early on? Mm -hmm. Justice Party USA. Uh, you should go to that website and learn more about Rocky Anderson. And yeah, yeah. please go to that justicepartyusa.org and learn about Rocky Anderson. He's uh, a presidential candidate mm -hmm. uh, for the Justice Party, Justice Party USA. It's an alternative to these two wings of the same party, the Democrats yeah. and Republicans. And uh, maybe he won't make it in the next 
coming election or four years from now. But we've got to have a, another real party that represents our neighbors' citizens, even if it takes 12 or 16 years. Mm -hmm. It's got to start somewhere to resist the domination by these two, two wings of the same party. Right. But I'm grinding my axe anyhow, but I wanted to yeah, say something ahead. about that. <laughs> Uh, Rocky, so uh, Obama administration, and you said enough about that, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Syria. How about Israel and Palestine? You got any thoughts about that? Well, I mean, it seems like the, there's stuff always going on there, and I think that's what people don't realize. There's always something going on in the Middle East. And just because the media is not covering it, the media is kind of fickle. They go, no offense, you're in the media business here, but uh, the media, like the major news things, they're going to go where the action is. And so, because for the longest time, I remember, you know, everything was in Iraq, and you hardly heard anything about Afghanistan. But there was, there was fighting and stuff going on there, just as bad as Iraq. Sure. And it's like all these different uprisings in these other Middle East countries. I mean, that's caught the limelight. That's another thing, speaking of Pax Americana, we're behind, you know, we've already been accused of this, and I, I believe it. We're encouraging these people to riot and rebel in some of these countries, and of then... Course. Yeah, it's, it's classic. Let's you and him fight. Yeah, because if you're fighting among yourselves, you won't present a unified threat against my domination. There you go. Oh, they're going to come for me too. I don't know. <laughs> well, you're going to lock us both up. And see, we're trying. You know, and yeah, I mean, we're trying to get in there and find a way to stick it to Assad and Syria. And it's like, man, I mean, we just need to keep our noses out of stuff. But like, that's ever going to happen. But, but what, what's going to happen with uh, Israel, Israel and, and Palestine? Palestine? I don't know. I mean, oh. I'm sure there's going to be another blow up. I mean, it's look how many times since Israel's you know been declared a state that there's just all the stuff that comes and goes, comes and goes, comes and goes. It doesn't stop. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's going to continue on until there's one big final blowout and where everybody's pulled into it. I mean, that's how I feel about it. I think it's one of these days. Because, you know, all the oil seems to be in the Middle East in that region, and everybody's, it's economics, uh, dry, economics, power, and money, which drives people to the battlefields, or... Is Israel going to bomb Iran? Uh, well, you know, that's... Mm. <laughs> they did, if you remember, several years ago, I think they hit Iraq. Because yes. Iraq, remember that? They, they staged a strike, it was an in-and-out strike, and, of course, it didn't get to the general public... It's almost like, oh, wow, we didn't know about that. I guarantee our government knew about that. Sure, sure. They so did. they might. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of 50-50 on that. I think, I think they would have already if it wasn't for Washington trying to rein them back in. It's uh, just scary. That yeah. could be the source of the next world war. Oh, yeah. Uh. I'm to the point. I told my wife, I said, you know, leave this country. I'm going to go to like Costa Rica or somewhere like that and open up a, <laughs> a bait and tackle store and sell fishing tackle, beer and lies to the tourists, you know, and kick back <laughs> a few at the end of the day. <laughs> We're going to find something funny before it's over with. This is so depressing, yeah. but we've got to address it because we've got to resist mm. it and do what we can to turn it around. Uh, predator drones. What do you think of drones? Well, that's something else. I mean, they're, these things, we, the pu general public just sees what we're allowed to see. And right. being in the year, many years in the military and different branches, we have things more sophisticated than that that's out there. I mean, I, I don't know exactly what they are, but I, you know, from things that I've been around, this kind of stuff, I wouldn't be surprised if they you know, use that to keep an eye on U.S. citizens. I guess they're flying over the Mexican border right yeah. now, and I, pretty soon they'll be flying over uh, major cities and the uh, the poor sections of the cities that monitor what's going on with citizenry. Yeah. Oh, it's just too scary. Well, yeah, I mean, they're, yeah. they're quiet. I mean, I've seen these things in operation. They're, you don't hear them, and they can be, well, they've got all different size drones and things where they can, surveillance, they can be put, you know, have munitions put on them depending on their mission. Yeah. So are you going to vote for Romney? <laughs> no, no. I, really, I'm serious. I'm really having a difficult time even wanting to vote. I know a lot of people say, well, if you don't vote, you don't have a right to complain. I'm like, no, wrong answer. I put in a lot of time for this country's military. I'll say what I damn well want to say. 
Rocky's yeah. going to be on the presidential ballot. Oh, you said Rocky. Romney. I thought it said Rock. I, I said uh, uh, Romney before. Oh, oh now okay. I'm changing the subject. <laughs> I thought you. you said, I'm going to vote for Romney. <laughs> <laughs> but you can vote for Rocky because the Oregon Progressive Party, mm -hmm. which I'm a member, mm -hmm. is going to have him on the ballot because we're sponsoring him here in Oregon. Mm -hmm. But that's a little sideshow anyhow. Uh, is capitalism... And democracy compatible, and you said something kind of close to that earlier on in our discussion. Road capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> we got to modify the capitalism yeah. so know what we're talking about, huh? Well, I think a lot of unfortunately, there's a lot of people they 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 like capitalism, communism, socialism, fascism, all that. They're buzz. They become buzzwords, and people throw them around, and and most of the time they don't even really know what they mean. Yeah. And they'll yeah. you know they'll have, they'll lump them all together in one sum, or you know try and blend the two like they're the same thing they're not you know as far as capitalism i think the names the way it sounds you know automatically red flags go up a lot of times you hear the word capitalism same with communism but uh there's nothing wrong with capitalism if it's not the point where you're taking advantage of everybody around you yeah. and other countries far away i mean i'm this is the other thing i'm irritated about and this, this little soapbox moment for me, and I'm sorry. Go for here. it. Go for it. I, you know, I am getting so sick and tired of hearing about the job problem and, and the employment problem in this country when it's all sitting overseas, and the bottom line is we're talking about all these green jobs and all and, and so and so added this number of jobs. It, you've seen that on the news here. Oh, yeah. It's like the thing the news is doing about Oregon companies adding jobs, and that's all well and good. We used to be a manufacturing-based country. Yeah. What gets people work is factories, companies, to where you go to work Monday through Friday or whatever. You get your weekly paycheck. That money goes back into the economy, helps local businesses. It's a no-brainer. Business 101. Come on. And yet we're like, oh, we need jobs. Well, they're overseas. Bring the factories back. And if you're not in your 50s, oh, yeah. no one's picking you up. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. I've been trying... I want to work. I have not been able to find you know work, and and the leads they get, you know, it's like they turn you down when they find out you know your age, anything like with a medical issue with the VA, and it's like, and it's a, it's the employer's market. They can get the cream of the crop and pay them peanuts. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing they're doing. They want young, and I'm nothing against young people. Don't get me wrong, but they want it's <laughs> they want these young, experienced people which they don't get that experience unless they've been in a job seasoned or doing something where they get seasoned in training and, you know, they can do their thing. But they want these young, attractive graduates, and that's all well and good. And then they want to pay them peanuts, and all these kids are coming out of college. A lot of people coming out of college, they're, you know, they're wanting the big bucks. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Someone said the super rich, the ruling elite, elite uh, are interested, their priorities are out of order. Mm -hmm. Rather than social responsibility, that's way down on the list of priorities. Mm -hmm. The first priority is power and money. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they look at ordinary citizens like us as just being tools for them to make some more money. Sure. So if, if they can find a human being in China or someplace yeah. else to make the products that they're going to sell to us here through Walmart, then they don't care. They oh, have no. gated communities. and. Uh, uh, well, that's I'm on no, my it, well, no, I don't blame you. That's, <laughs> why I get, that's why I get mad at this country when we're always accusing other countries of human rights violations. It's like, gee, we're like the number one, you know, <laughs> exploiter of people and violate that on a daily basis. Like you said, true about China. Not to mention these other factories that we have in these little countries here and there. They're uh, people getting paid peanuts. And, of course, the big lie that they've sold to the American people is that, oh, yeah, well, the products will be cheaper for you if they're made over there. It's like, no, they're not. You I, still got to pay, get them back to the country here, not to mention the fuel and the resource it takes to get that product from that country back to our country and onto the shelves. You're going to pay for that whole line of process to get that product and on If your I shelf. don't have any jobs here to earn some there money to buy the products, mm -hmm. oh, man. So what are we going to replace this monopoly capitalism <laughs> with what? A, 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 uh, a benevolent uh, socialism, or what? What kind of system do we have? Well, 
Systems change. We, you know, <laughs> we need no. We really do need an overhaul in this country. I mean, yeah. there is no ifs, ands, or buts. And people say, "Oh well, you know, that's bad thinking. That's bad talking. And you're a militant." It's like, really? Well, that's isn't that what the British Crown called the American colonists? They're, they're a bunch of turncoats. They're traitors. They're evil. They're you know, hmm. they're enemies of the crown. And we had a revolution. Okay, let's change the pace a little bit. <laughs> Uh, I have Fukushima and Trayvon. Which one you want to talk about first? Oh, uh, Fukushima. Yeah. What do you think of, of Fukushima and what's and that about? Well, I mean, that's the downside of nuclear power. I mean, that's, it's, I mean, nuclear power is great and it's good, but that's the downside. Like Chernobyl, same thing. You know, when there's an accident, it's long lasting. Uh, three Mile Island, yeah. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. look at them. Three Mile Island, Chernobyl to this day. It's, it's dead man's land. And we haven't seen the end result of Fukushima. No. We haven't. Because that, that was right on the ocean. And I keep thinking that's getting out into the ocean, it's into the spell. food chain. It's spell, yeah. And fish don't just stay. I mean, you have things that migrate. Of course. And you don't know where they're going to go. So, is nuclear power still going to be uh, around? Uh, I think it will. I mean, and just the way the energy crisis is going. I mean, there's it's like people don't want things have to depend on petroleum products. Well, I mean that's kind of a silly thing because most things around you require petroleum either yeah. directly or indirectly to manufacture it or operate it. So, I mean, you're always going to need petroleum-based products of some description. Mm -hmm. But I think nuclear power for a lot of places that, that don't have, like, say, river systems, like we're here in Oregon and Washington, have, you know, the Columbia River, we have hydroelectric dams. I mean, we were, well, we were even selling power to mm -hmm. Cal Northern California, California here mm -hmm. a while back. But I think a lot of countries that, or even, you know, states that just don't have the resources of hydroelectric dams and other generating systems. I mean, nuclear power, is, they, see, they feel, is a viable source of energy for electricity. And somebody suggested that if our country were to declare, were, were to uh, inaugurate kind of a Manhattan project mm -hmm. to split the atom, or decide to put a man on the moon and put all of our energies in that direction, we could have alternative sources of energy where we wouldn't have to have nuclear power. It, I think it can be done. Oh, I, yeah, I believe absolutely. it. But you know, the problem is the people, the powers that be, they're not going to, you know, they want to control that. They, you know, they won't be getting their money. It's like, what's that fuel and um, this alternative fuel made from grain? It's um, it's made out of corn. Yeah. And Brazil it, is, is they, they put this into operation. Sugar cane to make Sugar cane it, yeah, and yeah. corn, I believe. Yeah. And they, and they make a fuel. I mean, you have to, for your engine, you have to have special spark plugs. So, so it can and be done. Yeah, because it's a, it can be done, yeah. So how are you going to talk to the people in Washington <laughs> and get them to do that? <laughs> well, I might as well just talk to the curtain. I mean, because, you know, all they're seeing is dollar signs. Okay, one more before our time is running out. Uh, Trayvon, what happened to him in Florida? <sighs> well, I wasn't there, but um, I think the media, they're, they're, I don't know, they've just run amok with it. Yeah. I mean, they really have, and they're getting people all fired up, and everybody's at each other's throats over this. I mean, I don't know what took place. I really, truly don't, so it's really hard to say, well, he's at fault. No, he's not at fault, whatever. But I think the media is, you know, they're stirring up a lot of problems where well, it doesn't need to be. I'm going to be stirring up a lot of problems if I don't stop because they're going to yell at me in the control room. <laughs> okay. So it's close to time for us to stop, and I appreciate you both coming on again. Yeah, no problem. And uh, we're going to have you on again in the future. You're always stimulating and fun to have on. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And I noticed the way she looks at you when you're talking. You're a lucky man. You <laughs> see <that again. laughs> So let's have a few uh, PSAs. Uh, how to get the doctor on uh, local broadcast schedule. And go to my website, www.donbayam.com, and click on Present Day Activities, and there you'll find a, a, a schedule of when my shows are broadcast. And if you want to watch my shows on the web, go to my website again and click on uh, Favorite Links. 
And the next one is the ACLU, the American Civil Liberties Union. Yay for the ACLU. <laughs> How wonderful. They're protect, protecting our civil liberties. Go to that website and learn more about the ACLU. They're wonderful. Next, what do we have next to talk about? To get Dr. Don shows broadcast by other stations and other municipalities around the country. Ask your local public access station where you're watching this show in North Carolina or New York or whatever uh, to go to www.pegmedia.org and they will tell you how to get my shows available for them to broadcast from their local studios. Oh, right now, uh, we're going to talk about corporate personhood. That's my favorite. We've got to end corporate personhood. Corporations are running our country and using the ordinary citizens as fodder. We've got to eliminate corporate personhood and declare that corporations are not persons on the flesh and blood. Human beings are persons. Corporations are fictions, and money is not speech. We've got to have a, 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 constitution, a constitutional amendment to be sure that people know corporate, corporations are not persons. I'm getting all confused here and tired. So it's time to say good night. Uh, I want to thank my crew and everybody. Oh, oh, I got it. Thank you for watching. And remember KFC, not Kentucky Fried Chicken. Be kind, be friendly, <laughs> and be charitable, please, to you. And you, and you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again for watching. Enjoyed having you with us. See you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>